simple meal for the next four days for me here on my own. It's a stir fry consisting of half a kilo of pork mince, garlic, mushroom, uh, onion, red onion, cabbage, beans, potatoes and more potatoes here, uh, tomato sauce and obviously these are the tools that I use to make it. So let's get started. First of all, we peel the potatoes. Some people don't always peel the potato, they just wash them like I've done and they cut them up, dice them as uh, leaving the skin on the outside. Some people say it's good for you. I don't mind either way. French fries or uh, wedges are nice with the skin left on. So what we do is we have a whole load of potatoes that we're cutting up. So rather than bore you with a vision of 96 potatoes being cut up, joking, but uh, you can only see how I do it. I use a modern technology, potato peeler, and once that's done, all of the rubbish will go in the paperwork and into the garden. Maybe the eyes of the potato peel will grow potatoes, so that's what we do. The next thing is carrots. Again, very simple process. Dumber and dumber can do it. So if they can do it, I can too doesn't take very long. The whole process maybe takes me half an hour for the whole meal preparation and the cooking and probably another 20 minutes on top of that. We're now going to uh, cut up. I cut it in half, uh, the carrot in half and then in half again. Most of you will know that that's into quarters. I just uh, only bought three carrots, that's enough for a meal this size. Just cut them into quarters or in half, half. Now, all I do is I cut them in about half inch across. Again, just using a, a normal knife, cooking knife. The click makes you realize you're still alive. You can hear yourself. On my earphones, it's handy to know I can still hear what's going on. In case somebody comes to the door. You don't want them too small because otherwise it's going to be not so chunky when you eat the meal. So I'd say about half an inch, a little bit under, right the way through all of them. And that's all the carrots. And you just pick them up, put them into the, um, into the pot, because what we're going to do is all the vegetables are going to be cooked up going to blanch them, so to speak. So we're going to do the same with these string beans, or not, they're more traditional string beans. So again, I saved myself a lot of cutting. I just cut the, tent, the tips off. All of these, I just cut the little tips off with a pair of scissors. I find that's quicker than doing it with a knife and you save not throwing away all of the bean because you've uh, cut them all the way through on all of them. 
So it saves wastage and you get to look at each beam to make sure there's no damage to them. And that's what we do. Now I'm not as fussy with, uh, I've cut the tips off, but I just randomly cut my way through the pile. And they're all about an inch long, three quarters of an inch long. It's not so easy with a knife to cut through, it might be better if it was sharper. But, um, these are string beans, just a few fell off. Just a splattering of green in the, in the food. And it, beans are good for you anyway. Keep you regular. Again, into the pot. They'll get a final rinse before we actually put them on the on the stove to cook. Now, now we do the same with the potatoes. We just cut them through twice and long ways as well. Like so, and we have maybe one, two cuts, and that provides little chunks of potato, and we'll do that to all of the potatoes too. And that will be all of the vegetables prepared. Now that's the potatoes, the carrots, and the beans all ready to be put on the stove. The only other thing that I have to prepare is the cabbage, which I will do now. I will just cut it in half. I don't think we need the whole lot. That can go into the next meal that we make. We'll put the smaller one in the rubbish at the moment, but we'll take it out. We'll just take the leaf, the outer leaf off. Again, um, just make an eye that there's no little caterpillars that are going to add some flavour to your meal. I cut the bottom off, the core, and then, as my expertise tells me, cut it in half again. And just cut the core out. Voila. Now, the rest is just a simple case of cutting maybe a quarter of an inch all the way through the cabbage. Now you can have it just like that, so there's long pieces of cabbage. Or, what I tend to do, turn it around and just give it another slice through so they're a little bit smaller. And they can go into the uh, sieve or colander, I think they call it. And uh, that's ready to... It's added at, right at the end of the process because we really only want the cabbage to be still a little crunchy but uh, cooked as well. And it gets cooked at the last minute in the wok itself. So that's half a cabbage. Now, some people maybe don't want the cabbage. Well, you can put anything. The thing about this meal, no matter what kind of vegetables you put in there, you can put sweet potato, uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, anything you want. And that's going to go on top. Maybe we will do the other one as well. After all, we're going to make it to keep me happy. All right, cut that in half again. Just makes it a little easier. And through again. And we'll have a nice lot of cabbage to apply to the meal. Good, healthy meal. Now, 
the cost of the meal, I haven't mentioned it before, so I will at this point. Half a kilo of uh, pork mince purchased here in the market itself, not in a butcher's shop, in the market, fresh. And that cost me half a kilo was one, 160. Now that's half a kilo. Uh, the original uh, tomato sauce were 25, they're now 27, so they've gone up slightly. The potatoes, the uh, carrots and the beans, together with red onions and some garlic, obviously we're not going to use all of this garlic, so that will go into the pot, so to speak, for later. Uh, that all came to $2.60, uh, sorry, 260 so you've got 260, 160, and 2 times 27. Now the only additional things that you need is maybe some, I know I'm going to hear you saying, oh don't use that, a little bit of salt, maybe some magic, one little container of magic syrup, not too much, and um, a little bit of soya sauce, and of course some virgin oil just a tiny bit of virgin oil, which we cook the meat in prior to adding the, the vegetables that have been um, blanched in hot boiling water. Now the onions, I cut the two ends off and then cut through it and then just split the outer leaves, the dry part, off the onion, maybe down one one section, one leaf. And then they're just, once I've done all that, I then go through them all and dice them. Um, just like that, they're a red onion. Let's take the, goes in there. I just do show you again. Cut the, the tip off, the bit where the leaves come, and the side where the root is. And then right through the middle again. Uh, you don't tend to get crying eyes that way because it's done pretty quickly and there's not uh, not a chance to make your eyes water unless of course you're very sensitive to the smell of onion so that's all gone we'll probably do maybe four onions not all of them um, edge off, cut the leaf off, cut through the middle, throw the rubbish away, it's blowing because I have the fan above me going. I hope it's not interfering with the sound, cut it in the middle. So that's what we do and those that know with a garlic we break the cloves off the outer pits of the clove and we break them into that's going to be all chopped up that's the onion and the garlic, I'll probably use a whole garlic you just break the cloves up and the secret I found to get the final skin off is to put the side of the knife onto the clove and give it a buff and voila, très magnifique, as the French would say. The garlic is ready now to be chopped. Oh, I love the smell of garlic. Some people hate it. But you just go like that, and it gets the skin off, and you have the nice fresh garlic all the way from China, probably. Maybe locally grown, I'm not sure. But it's all ready to then be, I just get it like this and just cut it up. It doesn't have to be, I don't go crazy and super, super fine. I just cut it up into small pieces like that. And the same goes for the onions. I go along the, the onion itself, two cuts, and then I just 
down into it. Because now, if you pick up a piece of onion, it's all in little pieces. So it's great to cook in the wok before you actually add the meat. Now, the next stage is we just put a little bit of virgin oil into the wok. We turn it on. We're going to have on reasonably high. Give it a few seconds just to start getting warm. With the help of a spatula made of aluminium. We then put the onion and the garlic in the wok. Now we just let that cook up till it gets uh, soft and brown. Not too brown. Just leave that for a little while. And that is the basis of the, the meat seasoning. I'll just get some Now, those of are familiar with a little bit of magic syrup, just sprinkle a little bit of that in there, along with Silver Swan Soya Sauce. Again, uh, if I can work out how to open it. Not that easy to open for some reason. Oh, there we are. Managed to get it open. I think it wasn't properly opened in the first one. I just put what I call a dollop. That's all it needs. Again, just let it cook up, fry up, and uh, when that's ready, we'll attach, we'll put in a half kilo of pork mint. Whilst that's all being done, the other pot is cooking away the vegetables. So the vegetables are cooking, and when they're just starting to go a little bit between crunchy and soft, we take them off the heat and we tip them out through the colander so they're ready to be put back in on top of the mince that we'll be cooking happily in here all the way through. It's very important that it's cooked all the way through. Pork is uh, one of those meats that you can get an upset tummy if you don't cook it properly. That's on high deliberately because it's starting to brown off as you can see. What we'll do now, turn that down to low and we'll get our pork we'll get all the pork mince and we'll put it into all of that 
Oh, I'm sure the dog would love this. Have a have your rubbish close by. Just separate it. It's already been minced, so you just break it up a little bit. Let it let it blanch. Now, what I do is I go to the kettle. If you were to cook it like that now, it would be probably dry and burn. So I get, I get some water from the kettle, maybe half a mug full, pour it on top, and just let, let the, turn the temperature back up again a little bit, break it all up. Mix it all in, so the onion and the garlic, and the soya sauce, and your salts and peppers and spices, all get cooked in there together. And you'll know when the meat is cooked, because it will turn white, no longer pink. And if you pinch on a little bit, just you'll see that it's starting to dry through and there's no redness in the meat. So that's what we do. Now I put the lid on top of that deliberately so that uh, the heat can get right around the meat. And then every so often you can check to see it's okay. And as you can see, the vegetable, vegetables are starting to come to the boil, which will be good. Another 10 or 15 minutes and it will be ready to be prepared to be put into the wok. Now it pays to have a, a, a mitten or a glove or a small towel because the wok can get pretty hot when it's cooking. Just break up the meat, separate it because it tends to cook together. So just give it a good mix up so that you're breaking it all up and the meat is like it should be, which is lots of little chunks of meat. And as you can see, it's in a nice little sort of gravy now with the water. So it starting to cook all the way through. Again, you can put the lid on to uh, cook it all the way through, like so. We'll leave it there for five minutes or so. Now that the meat is starting to really get going, I like to put a little bit of, or at least half of the tomato sauce just to allow a little bit of that flavor to go into the meat at the start in the cooking and it's nice to add to the flavor of otherwise it's a little bit bland and as you can see it's starting to look yummy I almost want to eat it now you can actually use the same principle if you're making spaghetti and you want to make a spaghetti bolognese. Same kind of thing. That's like a spaghetti bolognese sauce. You can cut some vegetables up and maybe extra fine and mix it in and there's your, there's your bolognese sauce. And just get some pasta or spaghetti and put it on top with a bit of Parmesan cheese on top of it. Makes a lovely simple meal. Now you can see it's all starting to be blend in with the sauce. Looking just like bolognese sauce now. It's really looking delicious. Just waiting for the vegetables really. We'll turn that down 
to even lower. So it's just simmering now. Now the meat, you just spread the meat out a little bit, it makes it easier to stir in the vegetables. And we now that we've blanched the potatoes and the carrot and the beans, we put about half of it in there and allow all of the liquid and the juices to spread in with the vegetables. Like, just turn it over, get it all mixed up nicely. And that's starting to look almost like the finished item, except it doesn't have the carrot, uh, the, the, the lettuce. Sorry, the cabbage. Getting my tongue twisted. Now just put the rest of it on top in the sink to wash up later. Again, just I think the word is you fold it in. The temperature is probably best on medium to low. You don't want to burn it. And you just, if you think it's getting a bit dry, you can add some water, just a little bit of more water. It won't do any harm, it just makes the gravy or the sauce a little thinner inside. Now that's all the vegetables and the meat mixed in. The next thing is to, I do it like a toothpaste thing, I fold the container up. That way you get it all out. We put two of those in, in total. It's the time when you want to lick your fingers. I won't tell you I just did. And then we just cut the top off on the other one. Uh, you can use the Filipina Filipina style, I use the original size. I just like the taste of that just as much. I'm not really fussed whether it's a Filipino or original. This is the first one they picked up, so I said yes, we'll have that. Just fold it out. And once again, you just fold the sauce through the mixture and it's starting to smell and look, to, look so yummy, yummy. Can't wait to have some. And this will be enough for myself for three days. Today, Saturday and Sunday. So the whole meal is about 110 pesos per serving. But I have a very big serving, so that's how I cost it out there. I may also have a, a fourth day out of it, depending. But I think the dog will probably like me. She will annoy me until I give her some. So that's what you do. The only thing to add to that now is the cabbage and to put a lid on top to make it cook through. And bring the cabbage, just spread it across, it makes a bit of a, falls everywhere, but that's okay. We can clean up in a minute or so. Just cover the whole meal with cabbage. I probably cook, cut up too much cabbage, but. I'll make some, I'll make some, another dish later, curried cabbage, so it won't go to waste. And again, fold it through, let the cabbage cook. looking a little dry, so we'll probably add 
just a little bit more water helped it steam its way through. Put the lid on top, it doesn't have to cover the whole meal, but it just helps to bring the steam to the top of the cabbage. Because all you're doing is steaming the cabbage. And that's a simple meal for a foreigner living on his own currently or just when you don't feel like eating Filipino food it makes a thing. It can be served with rice. You can offer it to your family and I'm sure they'll eat it. Jera loves it. Nicole has a little bit of it. And sometimes Jane will be persuaded to have some too. So that's all we do. We just let that cook through properly. Just keep turning it over and you'll find that the cabbage will be just absorbed by the meal in amongst all of that yummy meat and vegetables. And the cabbage will be soft in a few minutes and it will be ready to eat either hot or cold or microwave. So already the dog knows it's there and started to say to me, I want some too. So we'll leave that to cook and that's it. Simple meal. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, press the notification button. So, bye now.